afternoon and thank you for joining us. Today we celebrate all the wonderful women out there and we're going to unpack how societal expectations can impact a woman's mental health. Then we talk about coughs in kids and show you how to make your own aromatic diffuser. On social media, we would like to know from you who is a woman that you look up to and what about her makes her special to you. Remember to use the hashtag Afternoon Express. But for now, let's get the show on the road. As women, we often subject ourselves to enormous societal burdens and norms. And the question is, do we have to subject ourselves to these pressures? I have occupational therapist Amy Isaacs here to help us unravel this complex subject. Welcome, Amy. Thanks, Adeta. Lovely it, to be here. It really is a complex subject, isn't it? Absolutely a complex subject. How, how do we move away from wanting to belong and fit in, but also standing out and being ourselves when we've got so much societal pressure around us? So much societal pressure around us and so much expectations yeah. of women. And don't we find those expectations exhausting? They are. I mean, you've got to be a partner, a pal, a parent, a caregiver, a homemaker, a goddess in the bedroom. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's too much. I know. And we be honest that it's too much. <laughs> and, you know, we have so many people going, oh, I need to fit into all of these molds. Mm. But do we have to? At what yeah. point do we as women make the choice to go, I actually want to slow down. Yeah. I actually want to be caring for myself more. I actually want to acknowledge that I need more support. I need rest. Yes. Rest. And rest, not in I need to sleep more. Rest is in like I need to connect with myself more. I need to take time for myself. Yes. You know, one of the first interviews I did during lockdown um, was someone asking me, women want to know how to be more productive. And mm. I struggled with that question because as an occupational therapist, I can help you be more productive if there is a, a medical reason that you are not. Yeah. And when I researched it, I found that productivity was never meant for humans. It was mm. a concept meant for factories. Machines. Machines. Yeah. And we are not that. Yeah. We don't have the same support. We don't have the same battery life. Mm. So as women, we actually need to take stock of our lives and go, where is it too much? Yes. And be honest with ourselves and a lot of self-compassion. Yes. Yes. It's okay that you can't do it. Absolutely. You know, Amy, a lot of my messaging at the moment on social media has been about enjoying and tapping yes. into the slow life yes. and that this hustle life that we have for the longest time yeah. thought is the coolest thing to do. Like, you know, talk about how productive you mm. are and how busy you mm. are. That is no badge of honor no. at all. In no. fact, women actually need to start giving themselves permission to slow down. Absolutely. This girl boss thing is great. Yes. Run for it. <laughs> you do you, but make yeah. sure you're doing it for you. Yeah. And then make sure you're balancing it yes. with time for yourself. What else do you enjoy? Yeah. I often ask, ask my clients, what do you need? And they can't answer that question because we're so busy responding to other people's needs yeah. that we only get to the point of, you know, maybe when we're in our late 40s or 50s, the kids have left the house, you're settled in your workspace, and then you go, oh, I don't know mm. what I need. I don't know how I can rest. I don't know how I can fill my own cup. Yes. And we have the opportunity to change that now. Yeah. Sometimes it takes disease to get to Absolutely. that place. And, and please take us through what is happening in real life mentally in this field. Mentally, we are exhausted. Yeah. Everybody is exhausted. We're trying to be everything for everyone. And then also, like you're saying, trying to fill our own cup because mm -hmm. we also need to go to therapy. So we need to make time for therapy. We need to make time for self-care and what that looks like. Whereas in actual fact, what self-care should look like is a very individual space. Yeah. What do I need? Do I need... Do I need naps? Do I need fresh air? Do I need walks? Do I need to change what I eat? Do I actually need to eat? Because yeah. I also have so many clients who will tell me, I only eat at four o'clock. I haven't eaten anything for the day. You make sure your children are fed. You yeah. make sure there are other people in your household, but you're not looking at your own nutrition. Yeah. And if we just strip it all back, what does my body need? What do I need? And that might be, you know, there are seven type, different types of rest. It's not just sleeping. You might need to be creative. Yeah. You might need to phone a friend and have a conversation that isn't rushed, um, that isn't going, oh, I actually just need to, I just need to tick this box. Yeah. Yeah. We have all of these tick boxes instead of going, what does my body and my mind and yes. my soul actually need for me to fulfill the roles? Yes. It's okay that you want to have all of those roles. You can also be honest with yourself about what else don't I want any longer? What doesn't fit with me? Yeah. And then I think we also need to look at support and community. 
you know, we I've been learning so much about the space of how um, previously with women, how we lived in community and how you weren't expected to do everything. And now you have your own household. So you're expected to do all the household functions, all the grocery shopping, all the planning, all the medical appointments yeah. and run, work in your own um, your own workspace yeah. and manage your workspace and work comes with its own expectations of yes. you. And then you're also trying to have a social life, but then you're also trying to be healthy. It's a lot. It is a lot. You know, at some point we need to go, what's important to me? Yes. And yeah. and to lean on your support systems yeah. and to reach out to them. Yeah. How are they coping with that anxiety? They're not. They're not. We are looking at, like, if you're looking at coping, what's happening with people at the moment is that we are trying really hard. Treading so, water. Yeah, but it's, it's we, we're almost in a, that, we would have seen things about high functioning anxiety, yes. being in a functional freeze state where you're actually just doing all the things you need to do. But when you get home, you are on the couch, in your bed, watching series, scrolling on your phone. Yeah. The same thing's happening. I mentioned that to a client last week and she's like, how do you know I'm doing that? And I went, because we almost all of us are doing it. Yeah. Our brains are looking for that consistent dopamine hit yes. to just keep us alert and just keep us sort of something that's going to make us feel better. But we're not coping. People are exhausted and they're leaning into other addictions as well. Yeah. Um, we don't talk about the acceptable addictions, if you think about it. Yeah. Online shopping is an acceptable addiction. Online gambling, not the gambling space, but when it comes with the online, people are like, oh, we don't actually mention it. You know, it's kind yeah. of okay. Because no one can really see it. It's no all in your cart it. or on your, yeah. on your screen. Yeah. And until it becomes a major problem for you where you are financially struggling, then we go, oh wait, maybe something needs to change. Yeah. But at the moment, um, we're doing all of those acceptable um, addictions, even food. Food has become an acceptable yeah. addiction. Um, we don't look at it as in, am I actually nurturing myself or and nourishing myself with this food? Or am I just eating and doing another delivery yeah. order because I'm too tired yes. to even think about what is going into my body. I'm just going to order whatever's here, whatever the kids are going to eat. I'm going to pop it in the air fry. You know, we're not, we're not caring for ourselves. Yeah. We're not getting really conscious about what the root cause of this is. And then we're just using plasters yeah. to, you know, to, to heal the wound. I cannot wait to chat to you. And we're going to chat to you later on what are the tips that we can do to become more aware of this, to implement boundaries and ultimately just to be healthy, because I think that's the number one yeah. priority. Thank you so much, Amy. Thank you. What an absolutely great and vital, necessary conversation. So a little bit later, Amy is going to equip us with some tools that we can use to manage societal pressures and, of course, our mental health. Now, moms and dads, we're going to talk about coughs in kids. Pali recently sat down with the GP to discuss how you can manage your child's cough. Let's take a look.